scratch, 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 scratch. Hello? Scratch, 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 scratch. Hello? Somebody? Anybody? Scratch, 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 scratch. Can anybody hear me? Please, please get me out of here. Casey stirred. He couldn't see anything, but he could hear her loud and clear. Dove, is that you? Of course it was. Her voice was unmistakable. Case? Scratch, 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 scratch. Casey, where are you? I'm right here, Dove. Follow my voice. Casey was shaking in his sleep. Lucidity was creeping in, but the nightmare's grip was strong. I can't. I'm stuck. Scratch, 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 scratch. Casey, you have to get me out of here. Say you'll get me out of here. Casey's heart was hammering inside his head, but he couldn't hear it over the scratches. Out of where, Dove? Where are you stuck? He knew that it was just a dream. Dove was dead. Not only that, but it had been an open casket funeral, and Dove's coffin was padded everywhere. The scratches weren't making any sense, so they couldn't be anything other than a figment of his imagination, as was the scared voice of his dead friend. Scratch, 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 scratch. The back rooms, Casey. I'm stuck in the back rooms. Casey woke up, drenched in sweat, again. It had to have been the sound of heavy rain hitting the lacquered wood, not the general sobbing, nor the priest straining his voice over the wrath of Mother Nature. It couldn't have been car noises or the like, that's for sure. The cemetery was nowhere near traffic-ridden streets. No, it was the rain falling on the coffin lid. That had to be the sound that made Casey feel so uneasy. Dove's grace was admired by classmates and teachers alike. Casey pressed his lips together and shook his head absentmindedly. Grace, grace of all things, was brought up at Dove's funeral. What had Dove been like? Smart, yes. Strong, very. Beautiful, without a shadow of a doubt, but graceful? Her back was always drooping like she was the human version of a question mark, and she never saw a problem in playing soccer wearing a skirt. If Dove's spirit was present, the likelihood of her face palming herself was staggering. Casey chuckled to himself at the mental image. His father smacked him over the head. Pull yourself together, he hissed from between clenched teeth. Casey was very well put together. He was so well put together that he was the only one to recognize the eulogy of the garbage it was. Whoever wrote it relied too much on their Google search. Casey eyed Dove's mother. The mother, the woman was devastated, surely, but this wasn't a funeral for her daughter, but a funeral for the daughter she wished she had. The rain was unrelenting. Casey pictured Dove standing beside the big oak tree, ten feet from where he was, dressed in her maroon overalls, mocking every word coming out of the priest's mouth. Duff had been the funniest person Casey ever knew, mostly on Monday mornings, when she would reenact the Sunday service she had attended the day prior. Duff was not like those other kids who were forced to go to church because their parents said so. Oh no, the Sunday service was her favorite time of the week. Not only would she listen carefully to everything the priest said so she could debunk it later, but she also paid close attention to the other people attending. Dove loved calling out hypocrisy, and nothing quenched her thirst, as churchgoers did. Although selectively, she thrilled on gossip. Theater critic. Every hour Dove spent studying, every time she opened a Word document to write something that wasn't school-related, every time their D&D &D squad would talk about dreams and aspirations, Dove would mention she'd be a th theater critic someday. Grace? Theater critics are not graceful. Grace is surrounded by pastel colors, and Dove was as rich in pigment as Indian ink. Why didn't the preach mention that instead? That her biggest passion was writing, and that she had more drive than Quicksilver in a sauna. Why didn't anybody point out that only four of Dove's seven cousins showed up? Why did Dove of all people have to die? Why was the world so unfair? Why was it raining? There were too many people crying just for show, and Casey didn't want to contribute to the masquerade. Either way, the tears wouldn't come. Casey felt too uneasy to cry. There was something about the noise around him, 
It wasn't the sobbing, nor the priest straining his voice over the wrath of Mother Nature. Casey kept telling himself that it was the hard raindrops against the lid of the coffin. That had to have been it. That had to be what sounded like scratching. Scratch, 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 scratch. Three weeks have passed since Dove's funeral, and the nightmares just got worse and worse. Casey still couldn't see anything, but Dove's voice reverberated within the confines of his mind, louder than it would have if she was right next to him. Hello? Dream Casey was set on not responding this time around. Hello, is anybody there? Casey felt his temperature rise, but he managed to keep the dream version of himself quiet. He was not going to interact with his dead friend, not tonight. Casey was sick and tired of feeling like he hadn't slept in years. He was sick and tired of dreading nightfall, knowing full well that the torment will start anew once he lowered his head to the cool pillow. Can anybody hear me? Please, please get me out of here. Scratch, 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 scratch. Case, Dove was crying. Casey, please, please talk to me. I'm so scared, Casey, I'm begging you. Something was tickling Casey on the temples. Sweat or tears, he couldn't tell. That sensation should have been enough to wake anybody up. But as always, Dove's calling from the other realm had no mercy. I need you, Casey. Please, please get me out of here. He knew he shouldn't give in to his mind playing tricks on him. The real dove was six feet under, feeding maggots and fertilizing the soil around her. Even so, Casey's will was hanging by a thread as fragile as spider webs. I thought you loved me, the thread broke. Don't you love me, Casey? Of course I do. Then get me out of here. Say you'll get me out of the back rooms. Casey woke up drenched in sweat again. Not only that, but he was also crying and shaking from the top of his head to the tips of his fingers. The school cafeteria was pretty empty. Casey's friends were all sitting at their usual spot alongside the elephant in the room, which was Dove's unoccupied seat. Karina, one of the two girls at the table, took her yogurt cup and almost slammed it on Casey's tray as soon as he sat down. What the hell are you doing? Casey wanted to know. Karina's face was stern and her voice even more so. You need to eat. Even though the girl was one year his junior, she acted like everybody's mother. I am eating. Casey pointed to the almost portion of mashed potatoes in front of him. Angie and Callum exchanged a glance, and both of them placed their muffins on Casey's tray. Angie also gave him her soda for good measure. You guys are being ridiculous. I don't want your food. That's too bad, because you're having it whether you like it or not. Casey was about to return the items to their respective givers, but Brian stopped him with a soft shove of his hand. Please, man, we all miss her, but you can't go on like this. Casey took a second to look at his friends. Everybody looked bad. The bags under his own eyes were the worst, but his friends weren't looking like they were about to walk into a photo shoot either. Brian was so pale, the contrast to his freckles made him look like somebody sprayed motor oil on his face. Karina stopped wearing jewelry altogether, and for someone with five facial piercings, that's saying a lot. Callum and Angie used to be all over each other during lunch. Now, even spotting them holding hands has become rare. Casey hovered over his tray. He said nothing, but him opening Karina's yogurt cup was all the reassurance his friends needed. The thanks went unspoken, just like the money sentiments that strengthened their bond in the past weeks. The lunch break was halfway over until... Stop. Angie didn't mean to say it aloud. She was taken aback when four pairs of eyes met hers in inquiringly. Callum squeezed her knee. Everything all right? Angie looked at her boyfriend with reindeer eyes. Her lips started to quiver and she shook her head slowly. I just want it to stop. Callum brushed a strain of her hair behind her ear and Angie took that as an invitation to lean onto him. Hey, well, baby, just give it time. The moment they shared looked way too intimate to be interrupted by outsiders. Yet Karina couldn't help herself. They? Callum threw her a poisonous glance. Don't, Kay, not now. But Angie didn't share his apprehension. She detached herself from Callum's side and brushed both hands over her face in an attempt to pull herself together. Ever since Dove died, I've been having these dreams. 
Casey felt his throat constrict. They're weird, like Dove is technically never in them, and I don't hear her or anything, but it's like I know she's there, and I know she's scared. Angie's voice broke on the last two words. You don't have to do this, baby. Callum stroked her back, but that only seemed to make her more upset. But I want to, just... Everybody was holding their breath. It's these rooms. Casey felt his heart beating inside his skull. And they're repetitive, like room next to room next to room, like underground parking lots that are divided into sections, but narrow and never ending. And there are no doors or windows, just rooms beyond rooms. Like it's this hallway with huge mirrors at both ends. So it just looks like it goes on and on and on room next to room next to room and it's so odd everything is like this old ugly yellow and it's bright but not that nice brightness it's that abandoned hospital light the one where you don't know if it's safer with the lights on or off angie was out of breath i'm not scared everybody said that baby nobody said that baby i'm not crazy half of the cafeteria turned to look their way Nobody thinks you're crazy, Ange. Katrina stretched her hand over the table to caress her friends. And if they do, she turned her head towards the onlookers. Let me at him. Casey hid his shaking hands under the table. Everybody did their best to comfort Angie until lunch break was almost over. Callum, Angie, and Karina stood up, trays in hands, ready to leave for their next class. The couple said goodbye, but Casey didn't hear anything. You guys okay? Karina was looking at Brian and Casey. Brian smiled and reassured her that he'd join her once Casey finished eating. Karina shrugged, squeezed Casey's shoulder, and left the boys alone. Casey and Brian were never particularly close, but they shared an understanding for each other that was hard to explain. Both were men of few words, and both appreciated the same things in life and other people. You okay, man? You don't look too good. Brian eyed Casey carefully. His stare was focused and his face had a little more color to it than it did an hour prior. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Casey tried easing a smile into his statement, but Brian's stare was so intense, Casey could feel it prickle on his skin. That's when he noticed it, too. Brian was shaking. So, um, Angie's dream. Weird, huh? Yeah, poor thing. The bell was supposed to ring any second now. The last of the students in the cafeteria had already gotten up to return their trays. Neither Brian nor Casey broke their stare down. Brian disrupted the silence, however. What about you? What about me? Any weird dreams lately? Casey felt the pits of his shirt grow cold and wet. No, what makes you ask that? His tone was way harsher than he had intended it to be. Brian flinched a little, and just like that, his eyes grew wide and he broke the contact. Sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. I just thought you looked like... Never mind. You thought I looked like what? Casey moved closer to his friend. Brian seemed to reassess the situation and looked like he couldn't get away from it fast enough. Sorry, dude, my bad. I misinterpreted something. Just forget it, okay? Brian rose to leave, and Casey shot up and grabbed his arms with force to bruise. Tell me, goddammit. The lunch lady called out to them, reminding them of something or another that they should and shouldn't be doing. Tell me, please. Casey's voice was so quiet, he barely heard it himself. Staring into Brian's face, he realized that that which he had initially interpreted as confrontation was in fact despair. Brian was on the verge of a mental breakdown, more so than Angie, and probably even more than Casey himself. I have them too, man. Casey didn't need to ask. He knew what Brian meant. The dreams. The yellow rooms. I also felt Dove there. The lunch lady yelled again. At first you think the wallpaper has just an ugly, outdated print. Casey felt nauseous. But that's not print. Brian's face was so close. His freckles were out of focus. Their cries for help. Scratches into the walls by the people who are stuck there. Boys! Brian and Casey jumped, as if a shotgun had been fired next to their ears. They scurried out of the cafeteria with mumbled apologies. 
Casey and Brian were in different classes, so Casey ran to his as fast as he could, ignoring his friend calling after him. Casey soldiered on through the rest of the school day, pretending to be attentive during class and purposefully avoiding his friends. Once he got home, nothing he did, be it homework or gaming, made daylight diminish fast enough. And that's because for the first time since his friend passed away, Casey looked forward to going to bed. Scratch, 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 scratch. Hello? Scratch, 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 scratch. Hello? Is someone there? Casey focused on studying his breathing. Yes. Scratch, 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 scratch. Case? Casey, is that you? Yes, Dove, it's me. Casey? Oh, thank God you're back. You have to get me out of here. Scratch, 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 scratch. Where are you? I'm in the back rooms. Casey fought to keep his thoughts aligned. Look around. What do you see? Yellow. Everything is yellow. That confirmed it. Neither Casey nor Angie or Brian were going mad. Dove was indeed stuck somewhere, and it was not beneath the earth in a narrow, rectangular box. Everything is so yellow. Dove, tell me more. What can... What else can you see? Rooms everywhere. They never end. It's like I'm running in replay. These rooms, where are they? I, I don't know. Stay with me, all right? I need you to concentrate. Where were you before? Before the back rooms. I don't remember. How did you get there? I don't remember. Can you remember something, anything? A face, an object, something? I don't remember. I don't know. Is there somebody else with you? Dove? Not somebody. What do you mean? It's something. Something is in here, with me. I can't see it, but it's here. It's playing with me, watching, following. Casey felt his consciousness slipping in. Casey, you have to get me out of here. Say you're getting me out of here. But I don't know where you are. I'm in the back rooms. Dove, that's not helping. Come on, focus. You keep calling them the back rooms, not just the rooms. You know something. Now help me out here. Where are you? Where are the back rooms? There was silence. Lucidity was coming down hard, and Casey never thought he'd tread waking up from one of those nightmares. Dove, where are the back rooms? And Dove answered, everywhere. The back rooms are everywhere. Casey was not drenched in sweat when he woke up. His sheets, on the other hand, were ripped to shreds. Two more months had passed since Dove died, and for the first time since her funeral, it was raining. Casey remembered the sounds made by the raindrops hitting the lowered coffin and mistaking them for scratches. He still had the nightmares every once in a while, but since the night he tried communicating with her more, the intensity of Dove subsided. Also, he began having normal dreams again. Dove's pleas would morph into grunts and mumbles, and the nightmare would melt into a halfway muted soundtrack for another dream, one that provided both sound and imagery. It was like Casey's subconscious was slowly yet surely winning the fight against these nightmares, allowing him to sleep soundly again. Casey's friends were doing better too. Angie began to smile again, and she and Callum resumed showcasing their teenage affection during breaks or outside of school. Brian also seemed to be doing better. Casey and he never brought up the dreams again, and judging by this much healthier appearance, Brian probably stopped having them altogether. Katrina was Katrina, heart of gold, shell of rock. Nobody could accuse her of not grieving the loss of her friend, but she was the first to recover after Jeff's passing and gave nobody a reason to worry about her emotional well-being. All in all, the five of them were doing fine, and even though moving on was still ways ahead, they were on the right track. There had to be a logical explanation for the semblance of their dreams. More than likely, Angie, Brian, and Casey had seen the same movie or read the same piece of fiction a long time ago, thus triggering similar brain activity in their heads when Dove died. Katrina might have had dreams about Dove, too. Callum as well. Katrina's parents probably did too, but that didn't mean that they must have spotted some inexplicable crack between life and death. That would have sounded a million types of stupid. 
Casey was too old and too smart to believe in paranormal nonsense. Dove was dead, but he wasn't. He would miss her greatly, but this was the first day of the rest of his life, and he planned on living it to the fullest, just like his best friend would have wanted him to. It was Friday afternoon. Casey and his friends were going to meet up at Katrina's for a game of D&D. They hadn't played in ages and thought that it would be cool to pick it up again. Casey had gotten home from school, showered, ate, and just as he finished brushing his teeth, his phone vibrated with an incoming message. The message was from their group chat, probably Callum asking which flavor Cheetos to bring, or a photo from Katrina showing off the setup she installed. Casey opened the message and dropped his phone with a scream. The screen cracked, but nothing else was affected by the hard fall. The phone vibrated again, and again, and again. It sounded like a chainsaw against the bathroom tiles. Casey himself had fallen and crawled on the bathroom floor till his back hit a wall. He began to sob. The phone kept vibrating with a plethora of incoming messages, all from a number that was supposed to be inactive and stay inactive forever. Dove was messaging the group chat in all caps. The first message had been a haunting picture full of yellow. Casey's fragile inner peace, the one he fought so hard to regain after the nightmare subsided, crumbled. He caught himself off the floor, grabbed his still vibrating phone, and dashed out of the house, fully forgetting to lock the door or grab him or grab his bike. Casey ran through the rain to Karina's house like his life depended on it. The muscles in his legs were screaming and his lungs were burning. When nothing mattered except the phone, it was still vibrating furiously in his pants pocket. Once he reached his destination, Casey dashed through the front door, completely forgetting to greet Karina's parents, and flew up the stairs to where his friend's room was. Everybody was already there, seated in a circle on the floor. Did you guys see them? Everybody froze. Casey was soaked to the skin and looked like he was about to hurt somebody. We have to help her. I'm serious. She's stuck there. We have to find her and get her out of there. Okay, I need your laptop. Karina frowned. Brian, unsure of what to do, pointed to the laptop on Karina's writing desk. Casey wasted no time in closing the Spotify playlist and typing shaman in the Google search bar. Does any of you guys know what she means by back rooms? I asked where they are and she said everywhere. So I'm thinking it's a state of mind or something. But how can it be if she's not alone in there and the walls are scratched? Like, what are we missing here? Casey turned to face his friends. All four of them looked dumbfounded. You are right, do you? Brian got off the floor and took a tentative step in Casey's direction. You need a towel or... No, I'm not all right. Check your phones, people. The four of them rummaged through their pockets in search of their phones. They all looked at their screens, then at each other. What are we looking for exactly? Callum sounded genuinely confused. Somebody commented on my latest Instagram post, but I'm pretty sure that's not what you mean. Angie turned her phone to provide evidence for her statement. Casey was on the verge of losing his mind. Guys, are you fucking kidding me? It's Dove. Dove sent us a million messages in our group chat just now. Angie shivered and Callum threw a protective arm around her frame in an instant. Brian and Karina were livid. Casey, Brian spoke with the tiniest of voices. Not cool, dude. Yeah, Karina sounded angry. Whatever you're trying to do, you need to stop right now. People, do you hear yourselves? Casey snatched his phone out of his pants pocket and tried unlocking it. Nothing. All the screen has to offer was a spider web of black glass. Aw, oh, shit. Casey scanned Karina's room and rushed to the plug that had her phone charger in it. It's not working. What the fuck? This piece of shit worked just fine seconds ago. Casey almost tackled Brian. Lock your phone and give it to me. Casey, you really need to calm down. Nevertheless, Brian did as he was told and handed Casey his unlocked phone. Casey pressed the icon for their group chat and stared for what felt like an eternity at the last message, posted around the time he was brushing his teeth. Callum sent a photo of the Cheetos aside with the caption, which one? Bastard, you deleted them. What? Deleted what? What did you just call me a... Angie, I need your phone. Angie was a step ahead of him, however. As were Callum and Karina. All three of them shoved their phones in Casey's face, showing a message identical to the one on Brian's phone from their group chat. There was a knock at the door. Karina, is everything all right? Everything's fine, Dad. Just give us a minute. Casey's heart was shattered. 
Why, why would you guys do this? She posted a picture of her surroundings. She finally found a way to contact us. She needs us. We need to get to her out of those rooms. Casey turned to Angie. They're yellow, Ange, just like you said. Yellow and never ending. Okay, now back off. Callum rose to his feet. And she finally got rid of her. And she finally got rid of her insomnia from this bullshit. You are not bringing that up again. Karina, I'm coming in. Karina's six foot four tall father stepped into the room, looking every bit as angry as his daughter. Karina's mother was right behind him. What's going on here? The mother inquired. Casey was just saying goodbye to everybody. Karina's father stunned like frostbite. Aren't you, Casey? Casey felt his eyes water. He bit his lip, and in the last attempt at tugging at his friend's heartstrings, he turned to Brian. Tell them. Brian was so white, he almost glowed. Brian, tell them. Tell them what you told me. The rooms, the yellow walls, the scratches. Tell them. Brian shook his head twice and shrugged. Sorry, dude. I have no idea what you're talking about. Everything within Casey collapsed. Without another word, he went to get his phone and walked out of Karina's house with apologies he didn't mean. Casey's retina stunned. Blinking was difficult. The world was asleep while he searched the blue fluorescent lights of digital worldwide knowledge, searching for something that might make him get to his friend. What color does yellow symbolize? On one hand, yellow stands for freshness, happiness, positivity, honor, and joy. But on the other, it represents cowardice and deceit. Not helpful. What is the spiritual meaning of yellow? Personal power and fulfillment, abundance, courage, and self-confidence. Yellow represents happiness, clarity, and sunlight. If that were so, Dove, wherever she was, would have been fine. Casey considered stealing his mom's credit card because he knew that the money he saved up wouldn't cover the things he needed to buy. An EMF reader, a thermal camera, maybe a Ouija board. Google was not all helpful, though. Casey found interesting articles and clips within regarding people who survived clinical death, but finding these people on social media was a different process altogether. The ones he did manage to find had ridiculous privacy settings. Casey couldn't speak to anybody who might have seen the other side, so he was just as blind as in the nightmares with Dove. Casey yawned. He tried starting his phone the one last time, but it remained unresponsive. He wished he could have had a better look at the picture of the back rooms. Maybe he could have spotted something Dove missed. Maybe he could extract it out of his phone somehow, upload it somewhere and do a reverse image search for it. And if that didn't work, well, he wasn't the world's best artist, but he could throw together five lines in an attempt at recreating it and ask Reddit for clues. He could try anything, no matter how ridiculous. Casey yawned again, and knew that it was time to go to sleep. He shut off his computer, got into bed, and closed his eyes. Scratch, 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 scratch. Hello? Casey opened his eyes and sat upright. He was alone in his room and still very much awake. Dove? He looked around but saw nothing. Dove, are you here? Casey got out of bed and looked under his desk, under his bed, and in his wardrobe. He even opened the window to see if there was someone outside. Nothing. Casey got into bed again and closed his eyes. Dove, can you hear me? Scratch, 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 scratch. Yes, Casey. Oh, thank God. I thought you'd left. No, I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. Casey was not asleep. He knew that for a fact. He still couldn't see his friend, but he could hear her as if she were right next to him. That was good. It meant less trouble for him to get a hold of her. It was so hard to reach you lately. Where were you? I'm sorry, Dove, but I'm here now and I won't leave you again. Help me, Casey. Scratch, 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 scratch. Help me. I will, I promise. I think I came across something that might help. Look around, Doug. Can you see? Will you get me out of here? I don't know, but I'll try. Look for a case. Scratch, 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 scratch. Casey, my Casey. What, what is it? Do you love me, Casey? Casey swallowed the lump in his throat. Yes. Will you get me out of here? Scratch, 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 scratch. I'm trying, Dove, but you really need to, shh, no more trying. You tried enough. I now need you to do. So will you? Will you get me out of the back rooms? Casey remembered Angie's pathetic eyes, glossy from the tears that were about to happen. 
He remembered Callum acting up in front of the girlfriend who was out of his league, making her feel like she needs him. He soon remembered Karina's self-importance and shitty attitude. Last but not least, Casey remembered Brian, dumb, quiet, treacherous Brian, and in the midst of all this was Dove, smart, strong, beautifully ungraceful Dove. Brian's voice echoed in Casey's head. Sorry, dude, but I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes. Yes? Scratch, 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 scratch. Yes. Say it. Say it, please. I need to hear it. Yes, I will. No, Casey. Scratch, 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 scratch. I need to hear you say, yes, Dove. I will get you out of the back rooms. Yes, Dove. Scratch, 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 scratch. I will get you out of the back rooms. The scratching stopped. Dove began to cry. Thank you. I got you, Dove. Don't worry. We'll do this together. Now look around. Can you see a light switch anywhere? Silence. Dove, focus. A light switch. Can you see it? Silence. Dove. Casey opened his eyes, and the first thing he registered was light. Casey squinted, wondering if one of his parents heard him talking to himself and came to check on him. But then his eyes adjusted, and the first thing he saw was yellow. No. Oh, no. The rooms. Rooms. Beyond rooms. Beyond rooms. And what had to be the most haunting color in existence. Casey got up on wobbly feet and felt dread expanding to every cell in his body. Dove? But Dove was no longer there. Which is not to say that Casey was alone. <laughs>